So my name is Cody Fisher, and a little bit more background. Uh, you already heard I'm a magician, so I know you're already looking, what's he going to do? But before I was a magician, I was actually a high school teacher. I taught biology, and I taught chemistry. And then I went to graduate school, and uh, when I was working on my doctorate in biochemistry, specifically protein crystallography, if anybody has any problems sleeping, just give me a call. I can cure you of that. But for the past 20 or so years, I've made my living performing magic. Now that I've said that, I have a confession to make. I'm up here speaking today, and I spend most of my life these days on stage speaking, but for as long as I can remember, speaking is a very difficult thing for me to do. I struggle with uh, fluency in my speech, specifically stuttering. So I am a stutterer. Now, I know you guys are sitting out there looking and probably saying, he doesn't sound that bad to me. But it, just like evolution, it is a long and slow and uh, incremental process. I tell people when I speak to them, I am a stutterer. I still do it almost every day. But what you are looking at right now is um, a 50-year-old work in progress. When I was growing up, as far as I knew in my small town, my small school town, uh, I was the only one that I'd ever seen stutter for most of my primary youth. I'd never met another person that, uh, that spoke like me. And honestly, for the longest time, I thought I was just, I, I was it. Like, I was the dude that did this, right? And uh, my mom was my biggest sort of advocate for this because, because I dealt with stuttering 24, 24 hours a day, seven days a week, it was, it was constantly around me, and it was sort of who, it was sort of how I defined myself. It, I told myself that story. The story was, I'm just the guy that stutters, and that became my story. Now, before I go any further, um, I know you guys are looking up here like, what's, what's the box? Do you want to know what the box is? Do you want to know what the box is? Okay, I'm going to tell you. So every time I tell somebody I'm a magician, the first thing they ask me is they ask me, uh, how do you do that? Do you want to know how magic works? Yeah. I'm going to tell you how magic works. Listen up, take notes, grab a pen and paper. Here's how magic works. The only, there's really only four ways that you can make a trick work. And that is through um, tape, wires, mirrors, or, mag or, or magnets. So that's how magic works. Thank you. You want more? Do you need more? All right, I'm gonna, I brought this box with me to actually demonstrate exactly how magic works. Ladies and gentlemen, this is a little creation here I call the box of mystery. Ooh, you know what to do. Ah, I love you guys. Okay, here we go. So I'm going to use this to prove exactly how magic works. For this, I need a volunteer, somebody just right here. You can stay right there. Will you just come up here right to the edge of the stage right over here? And what's your name? A big round of applause for my lovely assistant, Kavya. Now, you're going to be the eyes and ears of everybody in here, okay? Just do me a favor. You can touch the box if you want to. Show the back side, the front side. You can even put your hand in there if you want to. Go ahead. I'm just kidding. I'm just kidding. That was, that was me. Here we go. Go ahead, and just, go ahead and fill around inside there. Now, Kavya, I'm going to ask in there, do you see any uh, rolls of tape, buckets of wires, magnets, or mirrors? No. No? Are you kidding me? That's all that's inside this box, Kavya, is tape, wires, mirrors, and magnets. You had one job, Kavya. <laughs> That's okay. You did fantastic. Give her another big round of applause. Now, I always start off with that because I ask myself, you know, people always ask me, how does magic work? And uh, people always assume that we as magicians, we fool people. And I don't think that's exactly what we do. I mean, that's what we're hoping for. But I think a better thing that we do is that we get, you, we get you to convince yourself of something that's actually not true. We get you to tell yourself a story about reality. And the most convincing stories that we often tell ourselves are, are the ones that we really believe about ourselves. And so for most of my youth, my story to myself was I was, I was the kid who stuttered. Now, like I said, my mom was my biggest advocate. She was the first person to really tell me it's okay. It's okay to stutter. 
And she would say, you know, she had the most, you know, one wonderful thing. She would say stuff in her little country accent. She would say, honey, it's okay that you stutter. That's, that's just the way you talk. I liked hearing that. <laughs> I liked hearing that. But it was also my mom was the first person to ever show me my very first magic trick. It was in the kitchen of our tiny apartment, and she blew my mind with a card trick. Oh, my gosh. You see, most people that knew my mom, they thought that she was amazing because she was a single mom supporting three kids on a waitress's salary. I was too young to appreciate that. I thought my mom was amazing because she was able to find my four of hearts in a completely shuffled deck of cards. Now, my mom taught me this trick, and once I learned the secret, I was hooked. And magic truly became my passion. I knew that I had to do this. Later on that year for Christmas, I got a Harry Blackstone Jr. magic set. And my mom told me, she said, you can be a magician. Now, again, I was writing a different story than my mom hadn't planned for me. And she always had a way of, of, of twisting things around. Um, I remember, she says, have you shown anybody tricks yet in your school? I said, no, not yet. I didn't feel confident enough. And I said, well, what if they all laugh at me? I was used to that. But my mom had a way of turning stuff around. She, she would say something like, well, that just means you're not only a magician, you're also a comedian too. I liked hearing that. Early on, I'd never seen, I'd only seen two magicians actually on TV before. And I remember telling my mom one time, I'd never seen another magician who stutters. I don't think I can do this. And again, she sort of flipped the case on me. She says, well, well, then maybe you'll just be the first. I liked hearing that too. So I practiced and I practiced and I practiced until finally I got up the courage to do my very first magic gig. It was at school. Show and tell. Some of you are too young to know what that means. <laughs> so it was a little trick with a handkerchief. And here's what happened. I kind of expected laughter. I was kind of used to that. But instead of laughter, after I did this magic trick for my fellow classmates, I heard this. How did you do that? Do that again. Can you teach me that? It was the first time in my life I can remember where I was ever the center of attention in a positive way. And ever since I had that, ever since I found my passion, I realized that that's all I wanted to do. Now, on that day, I started to tell myself a different story. I was no longer just the kid who stuttered. On that day, I was the kid who did magic and it changed my life forever. Now, since then, uh, it's been a very long and drawn out process, and uh, I think everybody who deals with this probably has a different story. I don't think any two, story, two, two stories are alike. So I went on to become a high school biology teacher and chemistry teacher, but I wasn't just that. I was the teacher that did magic. I went to grad school here at the University of Texas, and I wasn't just the teaching assistant, I was the fun teaching assistant that did magic. Now, I was fortunate enough to marry my high school sweetheart. Um, I've actually known her since the third grade. We didn't date in the third grade. We both had a debilitating condition called cooties. <laughs> okay, now you're showing your age. Awesome. <laughs> but my wife, Deborah, she's an occupational therapist. And together, uh, we've basically taken her passion, which is therapy, and my passion, which is magic. And we've combined it into a program we developed called Rehabra Cadabra. And it's basically what we do. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, that's hard to say for me. <laughs> 
But what we've done is we've uh, basically, using her knowledge of uh, therapeutic techniques, my knowledge of magic, we've uh, together designed certain tricks that we teach to therapists all over the world, over 20 countries worldwide. We go into hospitals, we go into clinics, uh, we lecture for occupational therapists, for um, physical therapists, for speech therapists. And you may be wondering, how can magic be used in a therapeutic setting? Well, I'm going to tell you. Um, magic is good for enhancing balance, proprioception, weight shifting, crossing midline, problem solving, coordination, visual tracking, cognitive processing, range of motion, socialization, and of course, speech. You can't present a magic trick by yourself. You have to interact with another human being in order to do that. So, magic is basically it has taken over every part of my life, and I'm very happy that I had something like that. Um, but before I leave here and before I conclude, I remember I mentioned a little magic trick I did during my show and tell. Do you guys remember that? Yeah. Would you? Is anybody interested in seeing that? Or are you? Are you guys? Yeah. Are you sure? I, okay. Oh, you talked me into it. You talked me into it. Okay. Check this out. I love this. I love this. this there we go. All right. Yeah, 175 bucks, that's all that thing does. By the way, yeah. <laughs> so uh, the trick I'm going to do here is called the mystery of the little white handkerchief. Now I've been doing this trick for over 35 years, and uh, this is not exactly the way I presented it that day in show and tell, but it's pretty darn close. Now to do this little mystery, you're going to have to have a few things. You're going to have to have a magic wand. Now this magic wand has no magic powers. Um, in fact, my wife doesn't call this a magic wand. She calls it a $75 stick. The second thing you're going to have to have, of course, is a little white handkerchief. Now, here's what's going to happen. First, I'll do the trick, and then if you like it, you applaud. I will teach you the secret. Fair enough? All right, fantastic. So what I do is you walk out on stage like this. You say, ladies and gentlemen, I have here a little white handkerchief. You run it through your hands once, twice. On the third time, you take the white handkerchief and you poke it into the top of your fist just like that. You make a little magic gesture. I do all my own choreography, by the way and a little snap, and out comes the other side. It changes colors from white to red. Thank you very much. <laughs> the more white I push in, the more red that comes out. The more white goes in the top, the red comes out the bottom. White in the top, red at the bottom. White in the top, red at the bottom. You know, I was just like you the first time I saw this. I was so amazed, I also forgot to applaud. <laughs> there you are, there you are. <laughs> watch, 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 watch. Watch, watch, that's my watch. Don't pay attention to that. Watch very carefully. I'm gonna push in here just like this. I'm gonna pull it out the bottom just like that. And as you can see, the handkerchief has changed from white to red. Thank you very much. Now I'm gonna share with you the secret of how this trick works. I'm not giving anything away here. Uh, it, you can't just you know, tell a secret, but it's okay to share a secret with people who are interested. Now I've been doing this trick, like I say, 33, 34, no, about 35 years I've been doing this trick. And, and when I do it, people always think they know the secret, but I'm gonna share it with you right now. You see, the truth of the matter is I can't really change a handkerchief from white to red. However, I have messed up lots of laundry in my own home. Actually, the way this trick works here is that, it just, that you don't just use one handkerchief. You actually have to use two handkerchiefs. I keep the second one sneakily hidden right here inside my left hand. Any questions? Okay, we're good. Here we go. So what you do, when no one is looking, you take a red handkerchief. Actually, it can be any color at all as long as it's red. You stuff this deep down inside your fist just like this. And whatever you do, don't come walking out on stage like this. This is called the element of surprise. You're going to ruin the element of surprise. Stuff it in your hand just like that. Take the handkerchief like this and wave it up and down like this. This is called misdirection. See, if you're looking up here at this hand, you're not paying attention to this hand down here. So, Oh, and also, or second thing, don't open the left hand or they're going to see the... Or they're going to see the... Yeah, don't know, you're going to see the red handkerchief. They're going to know you have two, and it ruins the trick. What you do is you <laughs> take the white handkerchief and place the white handkerchief right here on top of the red handkerchief that's secretly hidden inside your left hand. Let me share with you the dynamic of the room after doing this trick for about 35 years now. Um, the youngsters in here, the kiddos, they think this is amazing. They're just amazed by this. If there's any moms in here right now, they find this extremely frustrating. And every dad in here with a smartphone is looking this up right now. 
You don't have to because I'm going to tell you exactly how it works. And I'm going to do that by leaving a little bit of the red sticking out the bottom. Now we have a technical name for that in magic. We refer to that as leaving some of the red sticking out the bottom. <laughs> Industry term, don't worry about that. So what you do is this. If you have a red handkerchief in this hand, you have a white one in this hand, it's very simple. It's just an optical illusion. If you put the white one in top and you pull the red one out the bottom, it creates the optical illusion that the white one is actually changing into the red one, when in fact it's just changing places with the red one. Now, I didn't tell you what the magic wand is for. The magic wand is for this. Sometimes I'll go halfway through this trick and somebody will scream out, open your hand. Thank you for being here, I'm almost out of time. <laughs> if they say open your hand, I take the magic wand, I tap the red one, I tap the white one, and now I can open my hand, but I can never do the trick again. Because I don't have a red one, I never really had a white one. The truth of the matter is, I only have one. It's half red, <laughs> half white, and that's the mystery of the color changing handkerchief. Now, thank you, thank you. Now I want to ask you, did I fool you? Yes. Or did, or did you fool yourselves? Because, <laughs> because it's very important, the stories that we, that, that we tell ourselves. And I, my wish for everybody in here is that everybody in here, whatever it may be, find your passion. Try new things. And once you find your passion... Use that passion to somehow motivate and inspire other people. Because when you use your passion to motivate someone, to lift someone up, congratulations. You also just found your purpose. Thank you very much.